call the meeting to order. Bell is on time as well. We're on the roll. Right, first on the agenda is can we approve the agenda? Does anybody have anything they want to add? Amen. Amen. And then we accept the agenda as we Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Public comment and inquiry for anybody here that would like to speak that has uh, an <coughs> item that's not on the agenda tonight. Susie? Hi, yeah. Uh, Susie Fia. I just want to talk about the uh, Bethel Community Forward Festival. I think it's in your packet to have the minutes. Um, I've, I was elected chair this year. Like Paul. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we got it for four and nobody else wanted it. <laughs> but uh, no, I think really good things are going to happen this year. We did lose two of our members, but we gained three. So um, I just wanted to report that. And we're really talking about some exciting things. We want to, a couple of people are going to talk to, you know, the businesses right downtown, see what we can do to bring the, the festival downtown more. They want to, uh, we want to bring the street dance back that they always had the night before. Um, and of course, as we, you know, go along, I'll be coming here and talking to you and, you know, just to make sure we're on the same page. But um, I think that's it. I was just told that I had to come here to let you know that I am now chair and that we have new members. So, I don't know if you have any questions or... <clears throat> you have a date set and whatnot yet? Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you think I know that well, can yeah. It's in September, I can tell Last weekend. And so we have the week after the fair, September... 21st? Yeah, 21st. Right at the band show, like we normally have it. That's 21st of the day. It's a Saturday. It's actually. Yep. Is that the weekend after Tunbridge Fair? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yep. Is no. it the same weekend as Tunbridge Fair? No. no, it's the following weekend. <coughs> it's the weekend after Tunbridge Fair. Yeah. That's what I said. <coughs> yeah. Yep. I have a question, and I don't know if you got the email from Thatcher Hinman regarding the, the trail marker. Okay, um, I just was wondering, uh, Thatcher had brought it to my attention that the prep is starting for the Gilead Bridge, and there was a, there's a sign there, or a kiosk. A kiosk. And Thatcher and I were talking about putting some sort of signage at the base of the uh, trail between the rec trail and the school, um, and with hopes that someday we can have a map of all the trails that are up in there, and you know, tick beware of ticks kind of sign, whatever on there. But Thatcher said, "What are they doing with that?" Kiosk, and I said, I don't know. I'll go ask. So um, it gets put right back where it goes. Oh, it's going right back there. They're going to take it down and put it back. Okay. That's our agreement. So it Road marks road. something, even though it never yeah. has anything on it. Yeah, it's part of that thing. Probably, I'm assuming it's probably required. To there actually is so. signage to go on it, but it didn't go up because we knew it was going to be taken down. Okay. So, but <clears throat> that would be kind of cool to have. Because it's for, for the trail system. For conservation. That's a conservation that property. So, what they're, what they're required to do, them being the contractors, anything that they damage in that area that's not within their property, they have to put back the way it was, including that. Okay. Uh, they have some temporary easements down in that area and that allows them to get down in there but they'll have to put it back. Now, if, we, if you choose to, to not use it there, they don't put it back, and you end up putting it back somewhere else, that's up to you. 
Can it can it be moved even though it was part of the FEMA grant for the conservation? I th I'll have to look. I think it probably can. Because really what the FEMA stuff does is it just does deed restrictions and say, you know, you can't put a building on it. You can't do this. Can't I don't think it, I don't think anyway. Uh, again, I'll have to look that it would say you have to have a interpretive kiosk, you know, on site. I, I don't think that's yeah, in there. I don't think it does. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I would check. If you're, if, you're like, if you're thinking about moving. It's going to be two years for the bridge to get. Right, and I don't know if anybody even accesses that land for any least. I checked the conservation commission yeah. because they're the ones that were in charge right. of all the kiosks. Right, and I'm sure the intent was, you know, of course it's, it's an informational kiosk so that you can, you can access and know what you're doing down there, but I don't know. Because right. Patrick's part of the conservation commission anyway. No, he's, no he's on the rec. He's not on conservation, is he? I don't think so. Okay. He's been working with us on some stuff, but I don't really? think he's sort of a okay. subcommittee. I think that's a good point. Maybe, the, maybe we go to them. And I think if Mary Floyd thinks of those as sort of her responsibilities. Right. I had talked to her at one point about them um, a year or so ago. So I feel like okay. it's worth probably checking in with Mary at least. So I just didn't want it cut down and like that. You said if they're just gonna no, they cut it down, we 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 would take it. No. Sure. Yeah. And no. we would take it. No, we love it. Take it down, but it won't be destroyed. So, or again, if it's the conservation commission and the board decides this is the right to move it over to that trailhead area, cool. Because they're not cheap at all. Well, we'd love it if the conservation committee. Well, maybe that uh, maybe the rec committee needs to reach out to the conservation and, and work together on this one and see what they want to do. Okay. Alternately, if, uh, if the conservation wants to keep it, talk to me about, we can have the school make it as a project since it's connecting their trails. Um, so that would actually be potential to build a project for them. You see, you're saying building a new one? Yeah, building another one. Yeah. That would be, oh, that would be for that since it's Partially part of the school. Sure. Right. Sure. Great, great to build project. There we go. Kids. Yeah. Because they are not cheap to buy at all. Yeah. You bought them. Okay. I would absolutely love to talk to you. Yeah. So if this doesn't work out, so I think the, I think the rec board should just reach out to the conservation commission first and see what they're Who's the about. chair of the conservation? Mary Floyd. Mary. Yeah. I can help you too. But uh, just let that part go first and see how that works out. And, Okay. If they want to keep it, then we've got a second option. Okay. okay. Excellent. All right, that's all I have for now. All right. Anything else? You're not? <clears throat> I believe that the appointment for 615 is that yeah, postponed. It's actually been, been yeah, it, will, it has been uh, moved to the next meeting. I can do a quick explanation if you want. Uh, it's a little hard to follow and it's, it's incomplete. That's why we're kind of waiting until the next meeting anyway. Um, so John Woodhall and I knew I'd forget her name. What is her name? Holly Hill. Holly Hill. Uh, they own property on River Street, a couple properties on River Street here in town. And um, they are in the process of refurbishing some of these these buildings. They've got one building that's uh, that's got five units in it, I believe, and the other building that's got sort of two units. It's got a, I think it's got a uh, commercial on the bottom and a residential on the top. Two on top. Two on top. Um, and they're they're in the process of redoing some of these units, and they're doing it kind of piecemeal. They're doing one unit at a time. Um, so they came to us, oh, I don't know, a, a few months ago, and uh, Polly when Polly came to us and said, I. I Think we've been overcharged for years. So they they started they own the own the building uh, in 2010 is when I think they took control, maybe 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, and this spreadsheet you have, all the the, the water and sewer the spreadsheet that you have, and I've written in numbers, uh, say five EUs and all that. So she came to us and said, well, over this this since 2011, some of these units have been empty and some of them have, have not, and it's been hit and miss here and there, you know, one quarter or one month that I have two empty units and then the next it's one type of thing. Um, so I went back and I looked to see how we had charged them since the beginning and if you look at these, these sheets, there's, a, there's pin marks that say 5EU, 5EU, and, and so what that says is that we charge that five unit structure for 5EUs in one way or another, whether that was real vacancy or not. 
Uh, and then the marks on the left that say like unit five empty, that came from Polly. So what Polly told me she did, and I haven't got the information yet for this, is that she took her utility bills. And the way her utility bill works is if a unit becomes empty, it reverts back to her as the, the owner tenant, whatever. So what she's saying is by tracking those utility bills and showing when those utility bills reverted back to her, she's proving that those units were empty. So here's what she wants. Well, let me see, there's one more step to this. We have annual surveys that we do that we send out to everybody and it says, you know, what is, what's the status of your building? How many units you got empty? How many are vacant? You know, how many are vacant, how many occupied, whatever. Um, they claim they have been doing this since 2011. And I cannot get my hands on it. I can't find, I don't know if this happened with the change in administration behind me or something, but all those surveys from 2017 prior are gone. Gone. Uh, so they're saying that they did them every year, and it's only once a year that we do them anyway. Uh, but what she's actually asking for in a, in a roundabout way is essentially every quarter she wants an adjustment being made based on how many vacants and how many they didn't have vacant. I don't know if they came in. They claim that they came in numerous times. What that means, I don't know. But they came, they claim that they came in numerous times to the town and said, I've got two vacant right now, or I've got one vacant or whatever. So I, I, I can't prove that. I have no proof of that at all. So that's what they're, that's the first step of what they're trying to do, is they're trying to basically say, we can prove that we some of these some of these units were vacant during these months or these quarters and we didn't get credit for it. And they're gonna prove that based off of, I guess, their, their utility bills. So that's the first part. The second part is I'm waiting to hear back as to what they want to do moving forward. Because that's what the board had told them last time they were here is right now what you want. Now for how long and what are you asking for? Uh, so it's kind of a two part deal. The first part is they want us to basically credit them for overbilling or misbilling or whatever the term may be from years prior. And then in the future, I think he wants to, uh, or she wants to possibly have us um, forgive or whatever the water on one of the units that's currently being renovated that can't, doesn't have water to it, can't be lived in. So there's gonna be a second part where they're gonna actually come in and ask you for, for how they want to move forward with this. They have no problem paying that they're full once the place is full and it's running. But in the meantime, while, while some of the units are not even inhabitable, they feel that they, they should be charged. And that's what they're going to ask for. It's just something, you know, some sort of a payment or something. But the other, the, the other issue, the bigger issue is the previous bill. So again, they, they have this concept in their head that they were overbilled numerous times where they should have been on vacancy. Basically, they should have been on a vacancy rate and they weren't. And back then, the vacancy rate was $25 and $50, 25 for water, 50 for sewer. Uh, there are notes in here where that changed whenever uh, Fritz and I came in and we changed that policy. And you'll see that note, um, looks like July of 2016. Uh, we adjusted it to two EUs. Oh, that's sorry, that's the other, the other unit. Okay, so, so if you look through the, the first spreadsheet, you'll see that there's vacancy rates. It says 50, and then there's a, so that was the, the vacancy rate uh, at the time. That was 2018. So what we were doing, I'm trying to think what we were doing at that time, because we changed that. I've got notes on the next one. Tell me if the select board approved the ordinance. Right. July, That's right. This July, July of 18, they would have so, been eligible. Their vacancy rate would have gone, and they would have been eligible because they were considered commercial. So, so on the, the five unit, it's pretty well set. Um, in my opinion, it was being built properly with the information we had. Um, if, you, if you look on the first, the first couple sheets, it says sheet pages three through six, and this is for 259 River Street. You'll see all these numbers that say 5 EU out to the side. And that basically is telling you that whether it was a fixed water rate or if it was a vacancy, they were being charged for the 5 EUs. Uh, so what I did is I went back and saw what the rate was, the water rate was for one EU back at that time. Just kind of 
Uh, so those, in my opinion, the, the quarterly billings were being done correctly. Now, whether there was enough vacancy rates or not, who knows? We don't know what was vacant. We, we don't know. And they're going to try to prove it, is what, what this is about. Uh, on 23, they were being charged in, they were really being charged wrong for a while because they were being charged for a one EU until we changed that based on when I took over in, uh, in August of 16. You'll see it on page 11 of 14. It says adjusted to two EU per ordinance. Per ordinance. We just basically read an ordinance and it says it's a two EU because it's, it's one per the use, for each use. Uh, so that's where that adjustment was made right there. And you'll see that kind of from there on out. And then the ordinance change happened uh, on page 13 of 14, July 24th of 18. Um, and that's when they went to, that's when they were starting to be charged for the two EUs. Because they had two units of that. So uh, I know it's, it's confusing, and it's kind of confusing to me too, a little bit. Uh, these units went all over the place. They went from vacant to non-vacant, only one EU to, to two. So it was a little hard to follow. But when they come in and, and talk with you, that's, that is the, the idea behind what they're looking for, is that you know, first of all, they're going to complain that we don't have the, the surveys to prove, you know, what was in there, which they're right. The surveys are gone, but those surveys, surveys were a snapshot of time, one, you know, one time a year. And what they're, what they're contending is that they came in multiple times during the year and they asked for these adjustments because they, it's, because the, the, the units were vacant or not, um, and they were never made. What, so, um, at what date did you come on board? August of 16, June, June of 16, actually. Have they come to you prior to this time to ask yeah, about their adjustments? Just when the last time I came to me. And only reason why I say that is, well, the first thing that comes to mind is why would you wait, why would you wait eight, nine years to come forward on this, yeah. right? Where three administrations move forward, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like that lawyer that waits until the statute of limitations is up and then says, oh, I'm going back to get them all, right? Mm -hmm. All documentation's all gone, yada, yada, yada. But, so it's hard for us to say what went on. But what we do know is that you came on board in August of 16, and this is the first that you've heard of. Correct. And, but yet, she's got the same notes in you know, 16, 17, 18 as she does prior, you know, so. Right. Well, they'll tell you that they're, they need the money because they're trying to finish up these units. Yeah, and but it's units. also not the town of Bethel's responsibility to manage their facility on what quarter. Exactly. You know, the policy yeah. isn't really there to say, uh, is it vacant one month to the next? It's really to say, when you pass in your, your questionnaire once a year, if you do have something going on in your two apartments as one, then that's your opportunity to right. go on that. Right, not, sure. Not we're gonna take, put you on for quarter one and take you off for quarter two and put you back on for right. quarter three. I mean, that's not the, the town's responsibility and, at this point. And if you look in there, and I'm sorry, I'm sick, so I'm trying to struggle through this, but uh, if you look through the five unit, the, the 259, there were adjustments that were being made. Yeah. Uh, and it could have been like phone call. And it could have been based, yes. or it could have been based off of their service. Um, I don't know where we're at. Sorry. But it's, I mean, just reading through the literature, they're, they're all over the board from when things were rented, when they weren't. Oh, yeah. In some yeah. cases, it, you know. And how are we supposed to keep In some up? cases, it sounded like the apartment was rentable because it didn't have occupants in it. I mean, why should that be the tenants? Right. That's the ability to do Right. Well, because back then, though, Chris, back then, the town was allowing partial vacancy rates. They were allowing a five unit complex that had three vacant units to have right. three. And we didn't, that's why when we changed it, the ordinance, well, we sort of just abided by the ordinance to begin with. It's really all we did. But uh, that's, why they, that's why you see those partial vacancies. But you, if you look down through the, the past years for 259, you can see there were some adjustments that were being made. Yeah, I saw that. You know, so my guess is that those were based off of the service, because they were probably done. I didn't mark the actual dates, but. They were probably done within a year or so of each other. 
Uh, so I'm assuming that some of these adjustments were actually being made. But it's pretty clear to see that you know the notes are consistent. You know, she, there's just as many notes here for you know your time here as there is for others. Right. And you know this is the first. You know, it took them two years to come forward with you. You know. I mean, at this point, it really is. It would have to be substantial proof brought before the board. You know, like I got all the. <coughs> Surveys in hand, and you know, I mean, there would have to be some substantial proof to be able to. Well, this, again, the surveys are, are, are just one one a snapshot of time. What she again, what she's trying to, how she's trying to prove this is she's going to show you utility bills that show supposedly when the when the unit became vacant, it transferred back to her, and that's how she's trying to prove when this. But here's here's your point. We are not. We have no responsibility to monitor every single multifamily business every month or every quarter and say, okay, what do you got this month? That's, that's ridiculous. And the intent yeah. is more on a yearly it basis, is. not a quarterly right. or monthly basis. Right. So, and so she can show that certain things get transferred into her name or, or however that system works. But that doesn't mean that the town was notified. Or in that case, it means that the town was obligated to. Right. Put her on. And the only right. right. And the only thing that would notify the town the way we do it now, the only thing is would be that survey. But again, they are also saying that they came into the office multiple times and asked for this change to be made. But but yeah, prove it. I mean, we and have no notes no. anywhere. But how many multiple times have they come into your office since since you've been here? Right. Zero. Right. Until this this. And survey. it seems like. You would think if somebody overpaid in the amount that they're looking for, that they would have been to the select board a long time ago, stamping their feet and uh, demanding justice. But it just seems like now that they've been called out to pay for their bill, now they're looking for deductions or excuses to not pay it. But it's hard. I mean, none of us were here. Yeah. The administration's not here, so the only way we can go on is they would have to be. Substantial proof for the board. Well, that's the other concern I have. There's no proof of any of this. Again, anything yeah. before you came to the, in right. the building, it's, it's just he said, she said. And, and even the survey doesn't do anything. Even now, there's things on the sheet that, you know, yeah. still, there's been nothing. I mean, the, we just heard about this, what was it, two months ago, maybe? I don't think it was that long, was it? Maybe, yeah. No, yeah. Two months ago when we first came yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> once we then he was supposed to leave and come back. Right. In a couple of months. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I would just. Well, that's, so that's the back story, and that's what that's what they're going to come to you with. Uh, so there's going to be probably two requests. One is we want money, and the second is most likely, or it should be logically, we want to have our a portion, maybe a fifth or whatever it is, of that you of that that one building, uh, our water rates forgiven, abated until we get the thing fixed up. And, well, that's the bottom floor of it's right nine. Bottom. It's 259, yeah. No, 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 it's the one on the No, 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 he said there's one in here, too. Oh, okay. In 259. Yeah, the other building, he's, I don't know. It's just it's a confusing reading through these. Well, he's supposed to be giving me more information and another cover letter that, that outlines what they want done. Because this doesn't, this doesn't do that. That's why it's not ready tonight, anyway. So, we will get more information. I just wanted to kind of give you a backstory because it's a lot of scribbling and it's a lot of numbers, a lot of he said, she said kind of thing. And unfortunately, even if they come in and say, you guys lost all the surveys, well, yeah, we did, if that's only an adjustment that would have been made one time during the year. And if you look back, adjustments were being made. You know, there was one made August of 15, there was one made August of 16. So, you know, who's to say those weren't based off of those surveys? Right. I don't know. But they wouldn't have, those surveys don't go off the so From their own writing right here, you know, on the 23 River Street property, yeah. all five units are currently being rented. Oh, I think. Well, that's according to, that's their, their worded. Has, yeah. been, has been fully occupied since, and then it goes to the next one, has been fully occupied since. And they gave the dates. It looks like the only one that isn't fully occupied is 23 River Street. Looks like only one of the two units is occupied. In the, in the basement, they want to put the, a business in there. Well, but they do have a toilet and a sink. Uh, He's got more wiring and heating. 
He's got 259 apartment one complete September 19. This means full occupancy for the first time since purchase of property. Mm -hmm. So I think he still has one unit that's empty. Unit one is yeah, one unit in that building, and then the other building I think is is completely empty. I think she was running a business out of it or something, and I don't think that's Tracy. She's, they're on vacancy now, right? I don't know. I I can't remember. Chris asked me today, and I looked at it. it was one of the five is getting five fixed rates, and then there's a two <laughs> unit, right? And I can't remember the two unit was it's. Um, oh, they are, I can't remember how they can see that. We have to be careful with this because this is a unit that okay. has been in circulation for whatever, eight, eight years now. And it, it's a little different. We've given, we've given other owners in town some reprieve while they buy a purchase of property and go to fix it up. Now, in their case, this is property that has been bought and had tenants in it in some cases and it destroyed it or there was something that happened afterwards. And now they're looking at remodeling it and not wanting reprieve from the town to remodel. I right? mean, that's a little different than, like well, we've been using that incentive to really say, hey, come, come, build, come buy this beautiful building in Bethel and while you're fixing it up, we're gonna help you out. And this one's been bought for eight years. In some cases has been used <laughs> and now, you know, I don't know, we we'll just have to take that all into consideration when we look at it. Yeah. So that's the kind of the history. Can I ask um, you a quick question? Yeah. So one thing, um, sort of in wrapping my brain around this, one thing I didn't feel like I understood was that they kind of outlined and they did that whole, the additional spreadsheet that we didn't have last time that they, I'm assuming they made of the breakdown of right. number of unit, quarters yes. empty. Yes, 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 yes. When, when they did these calculations, are they doing it, they want the, they want the, credit for what they paid, but is it being offset by what the vacancy, they would have still been paying a $25 vacancy rate. And so I haven't that, checked her math, to be honest with you. I don't okay. know her math. Because that was a question that yeah, I didn't go through and check her math either. Right. I just wasn't sure if we'd even looked at that. Is she just asking for the credit of the full amount of an EU, but actually not adding back in that $25 well, vacancy Well, that's rate? a good question. I don't know. I think we would need to ask them, because I know she scribbled on So the, the writing to the left on the spreadsheet is hers. Yeah. And at one point, she writes credit of 150 on the bet, on page 506 for 259. Credit of 150. So I think, I think what she's asking for, I, mean, is it, I think all she's asking for is that, I think she's wrong. But, but her, she's asking for $25 per vacant unit. Which would have been the vacancy rate, right? Because this, this spreadsheet that they made of the apartment one, 8, 2014 date unoccupied, 19 quarters empty. Unit price $25, wouldn't that be the vacancy rate? So she's asking us to credit her the vacancy yes, rate. Yes, exactly. So it's right, so if you look back, let's say, let's look at February of 16. Yeah. Uh, she has, two, she says unit one and two is empty. And we only gave her credit for one vacancy rate. That's mm -hmm. what she's saying. She's saying that there should have been two, so there's one right there. So if you see the stars, I don't know if you're on page, you have it. But go to page five of six mm -hmm. uh, for 259 River Street. She has put stars out next to the water of one, two, three, four, six of them. And at the bottom she says credit of 150. So she's doing exactly what you're saying. She's saying that she should have gotten 25 dollars credit for each one of those missed units. But she was charged for a full occupancy on that. <laughs> So even her numbers are, are whack. So we really look for the difference. Yeah. yeah not and, some of the narrative narrative and some of the narrative doesn't make that difference. She's the narrative. Doesn't I will tell you, I don't know if you know she these. Doesn't, uh, I don't know if you know them, but there's all the time. Sometimes it's hard to follow. She actually had, I think she had a stroke or something. So she's, she's having some health issues and he's trying to do that. So, um, but I think you're exactly right. Well, and, and they are being charged for the full, right. but then she's only asking for the vacancy credit back, which is, which is wrong, and it should be the difference of the two, of course, but but that's what this spreadsheet is based on, is she, like I said, she said 150, because there were six of them on that one page, mm -hmm. so she's adding each one, because she's saying we missed one unit, so it should have been 25. But in, in fact, it actually should have been whatever that one of you is, minus the and 25. So if she, but if they were reporting that 
one unit was empty but didn't report that another is the town exactly for that and what mechanism do we have to do that on a quarterly basis yeah except they are claiming and we draw claims that they came in i don't know what the frequency was but they came in and they made these they asked the town to make these adjustments i don't know when i don't know how often i don't know what was done with it we have zero records in our, our and if they software. And somebody would, yeah, they could have just made the change then, or it depends, you know. Or if they came in, or maybe they just did these surveys and said, we're done. Yeah. That, that we asked. Right. Yeah. And if they did well, these survey, people got the changes were made. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the survey was done. Yeah, I think they were done pretty, every year. You yeah. can see the changes every year. So we did that. It's this idea of, did they actually come in and ask for these other changes to rank these lows and bigs? Or and, and, and I guess my, just as we're having this discussion, my concern that was coming up with was if they had the utility bills that, you know, in their mind proves that they had the vacancy, would they try to take us to court over this and what would that look like? And so just just sort of looking down that road, be mentally prepared for if we if we made a decision mm -hmm. that we don't think that they're accurate on this or that we don't have any what I will send you is the vacancy rate policy at the time of all this going on. I'll give you both. We have a new one. You know what we're doing. Yeah. It's all or nothing. But I'll send you the old vacancy policy if we even had one. I don't even know if there was one, honestly. But I'll see what I can find. And at least that'll help. Because most of this is happening in the rivers. And the vacancy policy might have, there may not even have been anything. But what we were doing in house, as far as I can tell, was we were allowing partial rate. If somebody came in, if Janice Plunger came in and said, I've got two units that are empty, she got two units. But she did that. So, and we have notes showing all that. You know, we, everybody, I mean, Therese can probably speak to it better because she knows she sees in the software more than me, but I think when people are coming in and asking for these in the past, there were notes that were being made. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. And, and I think the adjustments were being made, so I don't think that they would not have made but Bethel didn't have a clear vacancy policy. We figured it out. Is that what it was? We had it, was, it, was yeah. it was very, very if, my, if memory serves, they mention a vacancy in their, in the ordinance, but it was vague. It wasn't spelled out right. as to, so when you, what you're looking for is in the water ordinance yeah, itself. I think all the ordinance says is that you have to pay the fixed cost of the system. Yeah. I think that was the vacancy. Because one of them, the sewer, in the water, one of the two was more specific than the other. Either one didn't say anything or one did, but they were still vague. There was no policy as right. to how it was unilaterally or, or inform, you know, enforced. You know, I, I don't think that, to go back to your point, I, I don't know, but I don't think that the town was required to put anybody on a vacancy rate if, based off of based off of what the ordinance says. Yeah, it just, it kind of it just says that they, the town is required, or that, that the users are required to pay at least the, the fixed cost. It doesn't say that. Yeah, I'll look into it. I don't have my yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll look into it and let you know if it's, if it's something. There's no record of them coming before the select board in the last eight years? I don't know how to look for that. I can look through minutes and minutes and minutes. Yeah, that's Wally, she'd tell you. Right. Yeah. Well, I know they had to come to last four years. Yeah. They could do it just now. They, they should have been before. The right. Yeah. Yeah. I can't really talk to Holly much. I talked to her once, but she's she's because she has health issues. It's kind of tough. So she's kind of he's doing most of the work, and I think he's you know he definitely doesn't know nearly as much about the history as she does. But um, you know when they're here and talking, I guess that's what those are questions we can ask. I will look at the ordinance and look and see if there was any anything in place. My guess is there wasn't, but the the um, the way they were doing it though, was they were allowing partial vacancies because I had it numerous times with with Janice Plunger and others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> so saying that they'll need some substantial proof to sure to, you know sure something from the and that's what that the town is. had said this but build them you know what I mean right because right now there's there's really no proof either way. Yeah, and, and they have nothing. They have nothing. To, um, they don't have the surveys, and unfortunately, we don't have the surveys. I've dug through the basement, I looked everywhere, and I can't find anything previous to, to 2017. Well, it's just like one of the units is still vacant, right? Apartment number two or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and we haven't heard anything in three years right. in regards to that right. unit. So. so that's the history. So now you know. That's the rest of the story.
So they, they are coming to the next meeting? They will be, yes, they are already scheduled for employment at the next meeting. And I will have another cover letter to give to you that is hopefully will explain more of what they're asking for. All right. Anything more on that matter? And we have Therese sitting here. Started at the last meeting to start talking about some projections. And, um, you know, as just like the state and other towns, we had a really rough winter and overspent on some winter maintenance. So we were trying to spend these last three, three and a half months on painting the belt and try to get our budget in order. And uh, so at the last meeting, we started talking about. You know some projections on where we might be, um, <clears throat> where we can tighten up a little bit. A lot of it really hinged on the tax sale um, portion of it. Um, tax sale and the people actually um, paying their taxes on time. Yeah, we did good. We did well. So the I ended up. It was just going to be easier for me if we're going to do this on a regular, on a monthly basis to download it into a spreadsheet. So. Obviously, the deficit has grown. Part of it is we did another AP run. Part of it is we did another payroll. Part of it is I might have missed some things the first time. You know, so this was easier for me, an easier format for me. So what I did was I took the budget, and I'm, I'm pretty much saying across the board, because you have to make an assumption. I'm going to assume that everyone's going to spend their full budget. So if I know that people have already gone over or I'm projecting overages, I'm adding that to the budget number. So obviously I'm being conservative here. So, but really what you need to do, because we all know that the wheels can still come off of us. Um, so, you know, I know, for example, Louise had said to me, well, I don't spend all the listing budget. However, she did in the past, but we, we reduced that budget. So over the past, you know, in the last round. So, um, so when you look at this, you can see, I tried to put notes in the side column for you so you could understand what we did. Um, obviously, one of the things um, we did, we made about 114,000 tax sales. We started with 12 properties. Um, six of them went for tax sales, sold all but two. So that's really cleaning up some stuff. That also included a couple big takes on water and sewer. Um, but what I'm estimating is what I said before, about 93% of collection rate of taxes. Keeping in mind, we have to calculate that because we have to pay the school. So within a week or two after the due date is when I'm saying 93% collected. So actually, you know, since May 15th and another with a month after that, we could have collected more. But I'm trying to use again a conservative number that um, to base on what's gonna what we're gonna collect for taxes because despite whether or not we collected all, the school gets all of theirs. Um, so you can see where I have I talked to Alan a little bit and. Um, you can see where you know we're going to freeze some things uh, for him. Um, obviously, I think the best picture, the best snapshot we're going to have is going to be in another month when winter actually ends. I mean, we're all you know runners. We all realize a good chance it might snow again in April. <laughs> so um, that by the time the end of April rolls around, we will have a much better handle. That should have put all the winter over time, all that behind us. This also included, the last round didn't include an $8,800, which was the last salt bill. So that the last salt is now included in here for the year. So it, um, so I feel like this is you know, better. It is just easier for me to do it this way, that I can just download that into a spreadsheet and crunch the numbers and give you notes. So you can see where there may be some savings. And um, I'm going to look at, I know to look at the VLCT passive bill. We're also going to have some savings, possibly in health insurance. So I want to look at that as well to see, calculate any savings in the premium, which I think was like 7%. But then I need to pay out all the HRA. So if there's, there may be a little bit, a little bit in there as well that might be a savings. Um, like here, we'll use rec budget. It's a good example. I have my page open to it. I'm, I'm saying, and this, and this is how this is gonna, how it works for me to do these projections. I'm saying the rec is going to spend their entire budget, but plus possibly go over by forty five hundred dollars because of their payroll. Now, what could happen is 
could very well be that that budget in one other place is underspent, but I can't say that right now because the year hasn't started, there's maintenance to be done, etc. So again, as we get a little further, we're gonna hone in on these numbers a little bit. But yeah, so currently we're still projecting a deficit. Um, we can cover it with, um, with uh, you know, by not transferring capital funds, which is not what we want to do because obviously it puts those funds behind the eight ball. So I mean, I'm still optimistic that we can, um, you know, if we do better on tax collection, if we don't spend every, if everybody doesn't spend every dime, you know, we might, <coughs> maybe we're gonna slide in here and have just a small, and then you can make a decision. All right, we have a small, if you have a smaller deficit, obviously you, you legally have to offset it by um, adding it to the tax rate next time. But we can, you know, maybe we will, maybe it won't be this bad. But my feeling is I am going to give you a, a projection that's financially, you know, responsible. I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to be more. Don't blow any smoke. I'm going to be more conservative than somebody else might be. And some of the, uh, just kind of looking through it and we'll review anyway, some of the big overspenders, mm -hmm. which, you know, kind of came with the winter and some of the unfortunate luck that we've had with some equipment, um, you know, equipment and things we've, we've overspent on repairs and parts and stuff for equipment at 34000 mm -hmm. um, Fuel, because we're out there plowing more, our fuel is up 10000 And salt, uh, 46000 mm -hmm. um, Overtime labor up 5000 And um, the other one, this is non, the, the only thing that's non-winter related was Tax abatements were up to 5,700. So other than that, everything's the same. Yeah, well, the sand will probably end up being, you know, we thought that we, because we bought like, I wouldn't say a year and a half worth of sand, but we took yeah. took the deal, we bought more sand up front, yeah. thinking that was gonna, but then with the winter, it didn't really get us ahead. So, mm -hmm. um, so right now, if we look at our whole budget, which I would agree with, Therese, that we're probably looking at the cost pretty conservatively. Um, right now, we were looking at seventy-three thousand dollar deficit with winter spend, pretty much. Um, I was going through them a little bit today, thinking that maybe that seventy-three probably turned into just under fifty. <coughs> you know, kind of what I'm thinking. Um, <clears throat> however, right now, on the revenue end of things, Therese's. Projections are built in at collecting 93% of what's owed to the town. Now, as an accountant, that's the, that's the formula that you would use. You know, you know that there's a lot of times that you're not going to get all the payments in, in the quarter that you're looking for. However, if all the taxpayers did pay all their bills on time, which they should, <laughs> then we wouldn't have a deficit. We would have a surplus. So, uh, so right now, I mean, we're looking at you know, if you take the $73,000 deficit that we're showing here, I think that can probably be better. Yeah, unless we have a little, you know, bad luck here between now and the finish line. Um, if that, instead of 93%, if we collected 100% of our funds that we should, right? Now it won't happen, but if we did, that would be another $130,000 of revenue to the town. So if you take 130 minus the 73, we're in the surplus, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, that's one thing I wanted to get out there to the to the uh, taxpayers is, you know, even with the winter spend and the, and the deficit of costs, mm -hmm. if everybody paid the bills on time, we would have a surplus. So I just want to get that out there. So, so when we talk about this again after we have a little bit of a deficit, so, um, because, you know, if that 7% of uncollection it's about three hundred thousand dollars, and then and then our portion of it's about forty four percent. The rest of it gets goes to the school. So, um, and there is some. I think, like I said, we'll see some savings. I think, and, um, I think that my we'll see a little savings and possibly in um, insurance, like vehicle and building insurance. So I think we just I think Pam is paying. 
she just did or she is now in this round of VLCT, so I'll have a better, then I'll know because only a quarter left. So, um, so I can hone in on those numbers. And you're always like, usually ahead, you know, on like a health insurance and, and things. And right now I know that uh, the highway department health insurance is over, it has a higher number than it should because every quarter I have to make an adjustment to, put, to move, um, or not, um, is retirement, I mean not health insurance, but I have to move it to like Morgan, so so specific percent goes to highway, parks, and water, so I make adjustments quarterly for retirement for him, so, um, you know, to make him accurate. So, but I, the question was, if Chris had said that the last meeting was for if you all had ideas or questions about where things, money could be saved, then we bring them here. So, does anybody have any thoughts? about that. No more water main breaks. That's right. 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 Exactly. That's, easy. That's right. Or if anything breaks, it's got to be straight time. Like, yeah. <laughs> Why does it always have to happen on yeah. Sunday, Sunday morning? <laughs> like, can it break on Monday? It's yeah. like your kids <laughs> time these things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Better time to get the breakdowns. You can make right. that happen, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, can the trucks break down? Well, well, not using them. Yeah, but we don't need them. One thing I would like to bring up Let's say that for some crazy reason we get a lot of, happen to get a lot of ice or, or weather that requires a lot of sand, I'm sorry, salt, in the next month or whatever. And we start to run low on our salt, I'm not going to buy any more salt. Uh, we're going to switch to sand probably sooner than, than later. We're done buying salt for the year, if you all are okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care if the store is you know, if it, just freezing for two weeks straight and it's icy everywhere. Sand will do the job. We'll, we'll use sand. Uh, if you're okay with that. I mean, that's a huge expense. I think we've used a lot. I think we're, I'm hoping that we're kind of trending towards going to more salt usage than sand anyway. I'm oh, sorry. The other way around. Sick. Sorry. Uh, we're kind of going towards more of a, a more sand anyway. Um, this might kind of start that, but I just want to see if the board kind of supports that notion that if we do need it and we need to buy more, we're not going to buy more. Mm -hmm. We're going to use it sparingly and use more sand, even now, than, than we, we would anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you're all okay with that, that's, that's kind of the direction I'd like to go in. Mm -hmm. Sun's hard enough now, so just a little bit of sand will do it. Yeah. I, I, just in the case, you know, something were to go crazy and it gets really cold and, and it would normally use a lot of salt, and, but we're not going to. You know, we'll use salt where we need to when we're going to that downtown area, but uh, we're, we're done buying that stuff this year. We'll just use sand where we need to and you know, we just want to have the support of the board so that when those calls come in, we can, I can throw you guys on the bus because it's what we do. What are you talking about? I'm telling them that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Can you mix it in the truck? Could you put sand and a little bit of salt and then? Not all the trucks. Kind of, huh? The big dump trucks don't do salt very good. Uh, and I don't know why. There's some idea. I don't know why. But like Doug's truck will. It'll run both. So you could mix it. Alan's truck, you could probably mix it. Morgan's, I, I don't know about that sander if you could or not. You'd have to mix it on the ground. Yeah, well, you'd almost, yeah, the best way to mix no, it is to kind of pour them in. But, well, it makes sense, yeah. 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 But if we ever were to go to doing this the right way, uh, you could use a liquid, uh, a, a liquid sodium chloride or, yeah. or a mag chloride that you pour on top of your pile of dirt and it just, just filters down through it and away you go. Yeah. But anyway, um, for now, I just want everybody to know that we will not be buying any more salt unless hell breathes over. I got no problem with that. Okay. Okay. So Dave, did you, you look like you had something to say? Did you have questions about the projections or things no, I just thoughts? Don't, I am may have all kinds of looks tonight. I'm not a whole lot better than him. Oh, yeah. okay. We're at the, we're the well, you have trio to send me an email or something, if you whatever question, I'm always happy to answer. But, um, yeah, so that's just kind of the way the Nothing projections are working, basically. It's just taking them and yeah, saying, just, just, just making just assumptions that the budget is fully spent and adding that on top of the mm -hmm that number to see. So, I mean, I agree with Chris. I think that, that they're probably a little high, but. Whatever would be there. Then. You don't pay me to be optimistic. Pay me to be tactical. So that's what we're going to do. a great job with the tax sale. Oh, a lot nice, of yeah. Good, a lot of good things I've heard. About yeah, and, uh, well, I'm not going to lie. Although, you know, people don't like to see tax sales, but. Uh, yeah. 
it worked out real well in the end. Yeah. I, you know, I was mad disappointed that we didn't, that, that I have two that didn't go, because that means that I spent money on the attorney for the tax sale, and I don't feel like, I don't feel like we had another option. However, you know, it's one of those things. Um, it'll go again in the fall. You know, that's the way it'll do. I, I would like to try to hold the tax sales in late fall, you know, like well, November. Those costs roll over until the fall tax sale? The attorney's fees and the legal fees and whatnot? That's a good question. Um, I've never had a property not sell a tax sale. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if we can make so, that happen. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, like it, I would assume that they would be able to stay with the property, yes, because the statute says they can up to 15%. So I would assume that they would stay because that's the lien that we put on it. Yeah. The tax sale lien is that amount. So, yeah, actually, I would assume that they would. Um, but so hopefully, um, those two properties, you know, clean up before fall and, and come around and pay and find another way to pay or um, they'll go again in the fall for sure. Make sure you looking for better numbers. Oh, it could be. There's a little sign at the bottom of the stairs. So that's just one thing that came to mind for us. But thank you. I guess the other comment that I would have, I was going to mention the salt as well, um, but also probably just coming up with, you know, straight time, no overtime. Yeah. Um, you know, how are we going to work with this? And we've got to hope that whatever storms we do have left won't be major in nature, won't, you know, won't be so that we have to go out and um, clean snow off the road, you know. So hopefully, um, hopefully they're more like the one we got on Friday, Saturday that kind of disappeared after two days. And, um, but definitely looking through this, you know, uh, coming to the table and working on this. <coughs> you know, winter maintenance, you know, whatever policy or whatever we want to call it, I think will be very helpful for next year, um, you know, with a combination of, you know, what are the materials that we're going to be using on certain roads. Um, I think there's, could be significant savings. I mean, you got to think, you know, you're in the $80 a ton for a ton of salt where, you know, a ton of sand, you're in seven, eight bucks, you know, so there's a, a huge difference there. Now, you might have to use twice the sand as you do salt, but you're still, still a significant cost savings. Um, so that's definitely got to be something to look into, and I you know, definitely would like to charge the board with moving forward uh, quickly on putting, putting something together, you know, while it's still fresh. Sure. Um, obviously, we want to get through the rest of the winter so we know exactly like what it costs us. This is you know, one of the toughest winters that we've had in the last dozen years. Um, so at least we can gauge that as one of the tougher ones, hopefully. Um, and, and really kind of get it, get the process corrected for next year so that we can get it out to the taxpayers of this is what we will be looking to do. These are the changes you will see. This gives them half a year or so to prepare themselves for winter. You know, um, so I think there's some kind of an ordinance or something. Well, I would, policy. Policy. I would say it'd be more of an internal. I don't want to use the word policy, but maybe more of a guideline. Yeah, maybe more of a guideline. I mean, you don't want to make a policy saying you can't use salt on that road. Well, well, no, but you want to have some, a guideline that that you can follow as internally. That you know, for the most part, let's say if you said we're gonna sand the downtown road but salt the sidewalks you know something like that that's our our guideline but that doesn't mean that if something happens we can't salt the roads in the downtown right you know? which is why it's not an ordinance or anything because it's not law it's just no the different we would say you know if you take the mountain road and we say we're going to sand the mountain road and not salt it but if there happens to be something happens and we need salt up there right. we can salt it you know I think it'd be more of an internal guideline for our employees. Well, yeah, and also the reason why it's nice to have it so when somebody comes knocking on Alan's door saying, why aren't you yeah. salty, he can yeah. go, look, you're what my bosses are saying. This is right. the policy we're following. This is the protocol, the procedure that we're following. And, and that's really, to me, that's really what it's, it's for. We, I mean, Paul, Paul had made an idea about Yeah, I thrown in and talked to Greg last week about having an end of winter meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, to kind of review everything that happened this winter and some of the challenges and some of the, you know, look down the road with the policies, talking about sanding and assaulting or whatever, 
and having a year in end of winter review, kind of. Here, it would, would be select board, and he suggested Allen, maybe Vulcan. Yeah, like a debrief. Like a debriefing kind of a thing to post projects or lessons learned kind of thing. Yeah, and to go over, you know, all those types of, of uh, all those areas. So if we were going to do that, so our next meeting is April tenth. Uh, first, first of the Monday, right? Here, so it's uh eighth. It's the eighth. April eighth. So the eighth might be too soon. Maybe we can do it on. In the 22nd, would that yeah, be on the end of the month? Yeah, what a, April can we, 20th. so the 22nd of April, Yeah. could we, could yeah. we do that debriefing, maybe appointment or something on the, is that what you want to do on that? Well, it'll be a, a likely okay. discussion, it'll be a likely discussion on this. I don't necessarily know if you, if you want it to be a public meeting. We don't need every person. Well, the thing is, if we're going to be involved, it's going to have to be a public meeting. Uh -huh. Unless you want to appoint we can't, one or two individuals to go to it and not be a select board meeting. Because I don't know that we want to have every citizen in here voicing their opinion mm -hmm. on this. This is more about you all and us and how we move forward with operations and the policies and things like that. So would it be better to just have the meeting or have this debriefing at your office and maybe just we'll have two select board members attain, you know, attend it and then you don't have to warn a meeting? Are there, do you know if there are laws in Vermont about having like workshops, board workshops? There are, there's three of them together, you can warn it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you yeah. could, you could, you know, we could have two of the board members represent the board mm -hmm. and go there. Sure. And you wouldn't have sure. that. You just so. can. Yeah. Would you, well, I mean, we could do that, I guess. That's, that's probably the. I mean, it's just a, a debriefing. It's yeah, like we're not exactly. making any You're not making major any decisions. decisions or anything. All it really is is giving me information yeah. so that we can move forward sure. with, with the policy. Yeah, that's fine. Do we have anybody on the board that would like to be a part of that discussion? Yeah. We'll raise his hand very quickly. Yeah, yeah he uh, uh, jump out of Noted. <laughs> very quickly, hand went up. Actually, I'd like to see all the, all, all the town board, all the road crew there, all of them, because they might have some input too, maybe. I don't know. So who would like to go? Anybody else on the board that would like to? Whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah. To okay. attend that? Yeah. I'll go. Mowing yeah, I mean, I'd like to get people that, you know, if you've heard stuff on the street, that's kind of the idea here, too. Because you guys are hearing a lot more than what I'm hearing. Good, bad, and, and ugly. So, um, that's what we're kind of hoping for here. So, I, I would think that, you know, at this meeting that we talk about, obviously, you know, the material we're using on what roads, kicking that can around, but also, you know, with the, you know, with the repairs that we've had to trucks and trucks down and, I'm sure, I'm sure some of that is, you know, the winter, you know, that we just had, and I'm sure some of that is, are we using the right tools in the right places, you know, type thing, you know, are we using the right truck on the right road, um, and that probably ought to be looked at very carefully too, because we can't be burning through this equipment. Our equipment, I would like to think, is fairly newer for this town. Well, our freight line is actually you're getting on the, the, the other edge of the, be coming up for yeah. a lot of repairs, I think. Mm -hmm. So, so because they're issue. that age. Well, like the, we just had an issue with the desk system, and they said basically it's just age. It was just a pan that was rusted. And just, what year are they? Eleven or twelve? They're on eight year rotation. They're doing first one's doing twenty, so I think they're eleven. Twelve. About twelve. Yeah, maybe twelve. So see, yeah. these trucks were the first trucks that came through with the new beef requirements. So it means everything is. Right. That death system is what's killing us. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that, I mean, that'd definitely be part of the conversation. Mo and I have actually had this conversation no, numerous times about the right equipment in the right place. And well, the combination we want to, the equipment that we do have in place, we want to make sure that that is operational as long as we can go. You know, moving it into correct. I mean, to continue to plow the mountain road one ton doesn't make any sense. Now, should it be a large truck, right? And the only reason why we did it one ton because we want salt with it, right? So if we get the large truck up there with sand, right, it's accomplished. Exactly. You know? And it can, and it can, but if we keep, if we keep pieces of equipment on the wrong roads right now, we're gonna, we're gonna pile up more and more debt on equipment, which is gonna result in needing equipment sooner than budgeted, you know, that whole thing. 
And when we do buy new trucks, what is the proper size truck that we need to, to do our work? Yeah. So. When do you want to meet? During the day would be best for us. And you guys can do it during the day, right? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, morning. say mornings, you couldn't hear you. you say mornings work better? Morning. Mornings? Morning. Okay. I don't talk about it. Well, the bell was one hour, so what, what day do you want to, uh, how about, I don't care. You want to do it kind of towards the end of the season, so you want to do it Monday or Tuesday. What day? What do you want? What do you want? April? We're going to April. Well, do we still want to do we still want to be able to have discussions the 22nd of April here with the board to start the whatever winter program schedule? Do we want to start talking so, about that then or do we want to push that back? Maybe we should have this meeting before that meeting. Yeah, so we bring the results of the I mean, discussions you, and stuff. Usually all your winter storms are done by the end of the second week in April. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. How, how about yeah. better? Yeah. How about April? Yeah. How about yeah. April? I don't know if I'm going to get jury duty starting on the third, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be available on Friday or not. I don't know. I don't know if I get picked. How about? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, days you to figure out? <laughs> <laughs> Just go in and say, hey, it's all 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 and I never got the call. Okay, we want to do it this week? How about the 28? Uh, no, I can't do it. How about 29? Don't you want to wait until right. the end of the... Or, or the debrief? Do you bring it up until the end or no? No, no, we're, no we're pretty How about much, Friday? I think we're pretty much through the, How about Friday? Through the horse ship. Friday, I've got to be in White River in the morning Kill me. until, well, no, we can do it. Let's see, I'm going to be there at 8.30. I won't be back much before 11. Noon? <coughs> so we can do it noon, yeah. You bring the pizza. You go with that? There's somebody else is buying it. <laughs> I'm bringing the syrup. Oh, all that. Yeah, yeah, so like that. So okay, so we're going to do it March 29th, which is Friday, at noon. And then we'll have our first discussion in regards to the next, probably on the 22nd of April? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, and then we'll just do it in my office. And I'll get Alan and Morgan and myself. Maybe the rest of the boys. I, I got a, one little comment. The overtime is, is pretty pretty high this year, and I think part of that goes to the great accolades that the boys got for keeping the streets and the t downtown Bethel perfect. Well, I think what you're going to have to look for to save money is to say, okay, everybody can't be perfect. Yeah. It, this was a great year. We had a horrible winter. You got the best road you've ever had. You add those two together, it costs a lot of money. So when you're talking about this, the, the folks have got to realize that maybe there'll be an inch and a half of snow on the road. Mm -hmm. And that's I, I was downtown and the road, the road was perfect the whole time. Yeah. I mean, they didn't let three snowflakes hit the road and they were plowing, mm -hmm. which... That exactly leads into why we're doing this whole discussion with, with all of us. Uh, it comes down to a couple of things. We've got, well, level of service is the big part of it. So level of service, if you're at 100%, you're paying for 100%. Uh, we need to determine as a board and as a community what level of service we want. And we'll budget accordingly. So that's, that's a good point. That's exactly why we're talking about doing this, I think, is when, and the expectations. So we, you know, that level of service. People, we need to find out from people and the board, we all need to come to an agreement of what that level of service is actually, what does it look like? Because you're right. It's going to have to be funded by the way it is. If it's, if it's low, it's low, it's high, it's high. Per the perfect wording for this is the proper, proper material that does the job and helps the environment. Mm -hmm. Kind of what you're, you're really saying, we're not going to use much soft. You know, right. That way. Well, and again, we want, to, we want to get the job done to a, a, to a, a point. You know, there is, this expectation that the asphalt has to be black all winter is, is not realistic. It costs too much money. Too much money. It can be done. But you gotta pay for it. We say that to people all the time. Yeah, we can do it, but it's gonna cost you. But it's the same as part of that. We've got to increase the budget on so. I mean, that's right. the bottom line. So that's the whole reason for this whole discussion, I think, is to really come to an agreement in our policy and say, okay, we're gonna go to, to Sand, up on the mountain or whatever. That way we can we can drop that budget down to accommodate what that 
new level of service looks like. Both the services are wanted for salt, and we'll have to increase the budget. Right, and that's what, and that's why this is a public forum. At the end of it, at one point, is we'll have those those discussions, so people will understand that yeah, the budget may drop, but so are these. So so is the, the service a little bit. It has to go in. Anyway, so, okay, yeah. So twenty ninth, and who's bringing? You're bringing pizza, you said. No, you're yeah, bringing pizza. I'm, you know, I'll bring some shirt and donuts. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll get some pizza. All right. You can't, you can't buy pizza until July 1st. Yeah. <laughs> 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 get some syrup. <laughs> Start making pizza. Yeah. There's <laughs> always donuts down there. Yeah, there's always something down there. You guys should put skin in every day to take a pizza syrup. All right. Anything else in regards to the projection on the board? Well, if you come up with any great ideas. Yeah. If, Dave, when you're feeling better, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call, sell or send me an email, whatever works for you, Dave. Happy to answer. I mean, really, at this point, the only thing we can control is some overtime and, you know, and, and sometimes you can't control a lot. There's not a lot of activities that happen between now and, you know, maybe a little bit on the gravel end or something like that. But there's not a lot of activities that we do between now and July 1st that are really costly to the town. We are going to hold off on painting and things like that. We typically like to paint uh, in May, yeah. the crosswalking and all that, and we'll probably have to hold off on that a little bit because we got a lot of things and all that stuff. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but ideally it's good to get it all done. You know, I like to get it done before May. It looked good having it done early last year. Yeah, uh, and that's, that's huge to be able to do that. But. I think it's the first time since I've lived here that it was all painted first thing. It looked nice the yeah. whole year. Yeah. Usually they paint at the end of summer and at that point it's way way above paint. <coughs> yeah. We'll have to see. That's one of the that is one of the things I've been thinking about with paint delay, but But it may I mean I don't know how much the paint costs, but paint's expensive to traffic every paint it's it's not traffic paint, it's traffic paint. So it's a kind of a little more heavy duty than just a cold air. But we'll have to find out the um, you know, you might have money because you have you know, like, there's money in that budget. I think I might have taken that and kind of put it towards this. Circles, but we'll see. You know, it depends if everybody's, you know, if the overtime, you know, if the next month if we don't get a big storm and yeah. water uh, breaks, might, you know, water breaks are this is the time the water breaks in the spring mm -hmm. when things start to fall. Yeah, so we'll see how at least the water department we did the, the last like the last week are actually charging the, the time for the people that were working to the water department because mm -hmm. there's water breaks. So it should be done. Yeah, yeah, because that way we're not eating it out of our own, out yeah. of the general fund. I mean, what we need is we need all the taxpayers to pay their bills on time. Understood. Now, May 15th is your next chance. So May 15th you know, to pay 100%. Taxes. Let's go for 100%. You need to pay it earlier. Please pay it early. Take your money in. Yeah, the interest was 1005. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, they used to get used to give discount, pay your taxes in full the first of the year. Yep. Really? Yep. Huh? And they just fix the discount into the tax rate. So some people took it, some people didn't. <laughs> yeah. It's so the next round is due May 15th. So hopefully we'll all right. there. Well, thank you, Teresa. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. See you later. Everybody. You too. See ya. Is it cold in here? It's freezing. Mm -hmm. It's cold here. Good. Really? Cutting back on the budget. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> Sorry. No, we're not budget problems. <laughs> You have to turn it off earlier. Yeah. Late, late. Yeah. Not till Halloween. Late, early. Yeah. Not till Halloween. Late, early. Yeah. All right. So last time we had the Fade Calvary Trust. Yep. Um, really was the thing that we weren't going to sign it. It was just we wanted a little more um, information, uh, which we received in our packets. <coughs> um, let's see. Sounds no different than what I read before. You, you, it does what it does, and until it reaches a certain amount right. of income, you don't get any money out of it. Right. It's tough because the way it's set up right now, with the interest rates being where they're at, you're never because you know it makes reference after six hundred dollars of reinvested in nice. income, then then the um, anything over six hundred dollars starts to be spent towards the cemeteries. And then any other leftover money would go to the library. Right. However, you know, for the last, I don't know how many years, <coughs> for the last, um, 
what, six years six or years. whatever that Seven it hasn't built enough interest to even do the cemetery. So, yeah. however, the account, the, the account has, you know, more than doubled, but nothing being spent out of it. So it's kind of a weird yeah. thing. Um, so I guess we'll, um, I would entertain a motion to allow myself to sign off on there's like three copies there. Oh, yeah. So move. Second. Second. Hey, all in favor? The motion is to allow you to sign up. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it says the chair. My memory was a little bit there, wasn't it, from 30 yeah. years ago? Yeah, you were on it. That was... I don't know about those board members back in 87. 88. No, 88. You, you don't know that? <laughs> Just the one. The closest, yeah. One to the, one to, I don't really know if he's around here anymore. And I mean, Mons is in New Mexico. I'm going to hand this off to you because I don't feel good. Is that what happens okay. to select board okay. member? Yeah. <laughs> I know you, you know this inside and out. I'll so. this I'm not sure if he's around here. I don't know where Richard is. His, his first wife's out in Montana, the Wyoming. Or it's just those um, two spots? Should be three. I think there's three signs. There's, there's a letter we have to sign here, and then there's two. Uh, All right, this one here, yeah. and then something over there. Yeah, I'll get it. Today, twenty eighth. Today, twenty five. Twenty five. came um, to the pool and did an inspection of everything. And um, in the write-up that we received from him, uh, one of the things that the VLCT is saying is that we did not have a bloodborne pathogen policy or other hazardous body waste um, policy, how to deal with this. And so I spent a good week um, looking at what OSHA says we should, what OSHA recommends for bloodborne pathogens and other hazardous waste, um, and, and then what the VLCT recommends. I went to Dave Aldrighetti and said, does the fire department have anything in writing? Because I didn't want to have to reinvent the wheel. And he said, shh. No, we don't have anything. Um, it, nor has the VLCT said that the fire department should have one yet. Um, and then I asked the highway, does the highway have, does the town have? Well, the town does not have a bloodborne pathogen uh, policy of any kind. And so as I was reading through OSHA's um, policies, they recommend very strongly that highway departments have them, fire department has a policy, the direct department has a policy. So I kind of took it upon myself, whether it was right or wrong, I, I just wrote a, a policy based on what um, the VLCT had kind of as a standard, as an example. And, um, and so this is what I would like to adopt for the rec department. And I think it's really, really important that we have one. Uh, we did have a case last summer where uh, a little girl fell, scraped her knee up pretty bad, um, and mom was really upset that we did not have a formal way of getting rid of all of the materials that we use to clean up the blood. So I really do think it's a very good thing to have this policy. With the policy, though, there has to be a training. And so I reached out to Matt Parrish at the White River Valley Ambulance because VLCT says that the American Red Cross trained, I'm trained by the American Red Cross, all the lifeguards are trained by the American Red Cross, that that is not sufficient training. 
So I reached out to Matt Parrish and he said he would be happy to come and, and do a bloodborne pathogen training with our staff. Um, and then we got talking and he said, you know, if you ever, if you get all the materials, uh, the, the containers, the, the needle containers, the, the waste containers, the waste bags, everything that OSHA says you need to have. He said, if you ever have a situation where you have to get rid of that, just bring it up to the White River Valley Ambulance. He said, we, we take all of our waste to Gifford and they take care of it. So we already have that agreement. Um, I talked to Dave Aldrighetti. He said, you know, it's probably not a bad idea if the slick board adopts this for the rec facility that we just tweak the language so that the fire department can adopt it. So if the VLCT says to them, you need to have this, it's already in place. Um, and then I had talked to Greg about, you know, maybe the highway department also develop, you know, adopting the policy. So basically what OSHA says is if anybody in the public forum is dealing with the public, they should have some basic training of how to deal with um, blood or other body waste. Um, and so I'm sure Matt would be happy to train the, def the fire department and the town crew, the highway department, if that, if that was something that you felt was necessary. Um, I would just need to give him a heads up. But this is why we have it now. I would really like to adopt it so that um, Therese can, I can get it sent to Wade and Therese can use that as part of um, what she's trying to do to get some grant money for the town. Um, so if you have any questions, I don't know if I included in there the training, I don't think so. I think that's just the policy. Um, it also, there should be part of that packet um, a signature page where if a staff member, so bless you, so like at the rec department, once we have the training, if a, um, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me, so I don't it's a, it's a waiver form. Yes, yeah. yes, so um, this is, this was included because VLCT says it needs to be included. Um, and it basically says that due to the nature of our occupation, you know, we're going to be most likely um, at risk of exposure. Um, but with that understanding, I purchased everything that we would need at the pool to reduce the amount of exposure. Um, but, we have to, our staff has to be given the opportunity to be vaccinated against the hepatitis B, um, back, or receive the hepatitis B vaccine at the expense of the town. Um, however, a staff member can decline that. Um, but they also can at any time during their employment change their mind. Um, and so that's what this form here says. And this came right from the VLCT. This was not something that I, um, that I came up with on my own. I got a couple questions. Did you, uh, uh, anyone direct you to look at any of the local businesses that have these policies to see what they did? So you could look at, look at one that's been in, in effect for a while? No. Okay. Are there any right here in town that have them? If I cut my finger over there, there's six guys in casual suits all over the place walking me to... It's, it's crazy. At Mills? No, at GW Plus. Oh, GW Plus. Oh, I'm sure they must have one, it's, yes. It's, it's, it's crazy. But anyway, I was just thinking for... But you've already written it, so... Um, and then the other one, the other question I have, which to me is more, is more concerning, is... Uh, the risks to the town if an employee says, I don't want the hepatitis B vaccination, if something happens to them, I would like something written here that says, okay, I denied, I declined to have the vaccination. So if anything happens to me because I did not have that, the town is not responsible for, I have to, I have to talk right here, we don't say anything about if I take, don't take this 
it's a waiver form saying that I know that I, I could be exposed, but I have chosen not to take the, to not have to have a high speed. Right. The second paragraph says, I have been given the opportunity to be vaccinated with the hepatitis B vaccine at the expense of the employer. Yeah. Too much limitation. There's nothing that specifically says that I agree not to sue the town. Well, I think I think Greg, I think we kind of hashed out that language because um, again, this is not all my writing. I mean, I I pulled from the um, from the OSHA site. I pulled mostly from the VLCT what they sent me as an example because I said to Wade, I don't know the beginnings of how to write this. So do you have a sample? And he sent this to me. And, I, and Greg and I spent quite a bit of time. Um, I wrote it, Greg read it. We talked about questions. Um, I went back to the drawing board, tried to clarify anything so that there was, there was really um, as little risk to the town as possible. Um, but the, the language in the VLCT example was they can they can decline it. So if Alan says, I don't think I'm at risk, so he declines the vaccination if he doesn't already have it, but then he, you know, gets called to a scene or he's at a scene where someone gets hurt, he could change his mind. Legally, I think he has the right to change his mind as per what we talked about and what the language was at the VLCT. So, yeah, so what you would like to see is like a no hold harmless clause type of thing. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I read it again and I can, I can see where that's kind of in there, but I, the first time I read it, I said, whoa, wait a minute. I don't want this shot. If anything happens to me, you're still on the hook, buddy. Well, also, too, you know, last summer when you Wade might not, came... You might go to that scene where you don't have time to say, I'm going to be in my mind. There's, you come from a car accident and you're die. Right. You don't have time to make a, to change your mind. Right. You, need, you either need to walk away or you need to do something. Well, even if you do it at that moment, it's not going to have an impact. If right. You something, I'm your, I'm something happens right, 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 right then. I mean, it's, it takes a while for the vaccine to take effect. Right. And, and, and there is language in here. Um, well, under vaccinations and post exposure follow up, it talks about what yes, to do. Yes. The employer who has not had the vaccination will be encouraged to receive the series, but if declined, the employee will sign the OSHA declination form. If the employee does not have the vaccination, wishes to receive the vaccination series, they may do so at no cost to them. That's really, that's all it says. Now, when Wade came last summer and asked, do you have a bloodborne pathogen policy? We said, we do not. I believe we did not. Um, but what I did immediately was I collected the immunization records. I had each of my lifeguards provide their immunization record. It went in their personnel file. So I had, I, we, I, we had proof that all the lifeguards had the hepatitis B vaccination. So for, for young people, it may not necessarily be a problem uh, because, you know, if kids go to college and whatnot, they have to have the vaccinations. Um, you know, it might be older staff that may not um, have that vaccination, but um, as my first line of defense, I said, okay, just everyone needs to provide a record of their immunizations and we put it, we had them in their personnel files. Um, so, so as a town, I don't know if, you know, if in here the language from the VLCT was that we would encourage employees to receive the series. I mean, I think that's all we can do. We can't force people to get vaccinations. Um, so what does everybody else think? I, I see. I think the idea is that you just add a clause that says that, that if, if you choose not to take this, the town will not be held will, will not be held harmless. I think it's a held harmless clause, basically saying you have forfeited all of your rights to sue the town if you, if you receive if you did not receive it and you end up with. I think that's what you're looking for, right? Pretty simple clause. I think we can add to it if that's what everybody would like to. 
I think we could probably, because um, you need to get this approved pretty quickly, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, would the board be comfortable approving the actual document and coming back with a waiver form, approving it as a separate item to this? I mean, I, I think I think that you did an awesome job of this. Um, the, the only concern I have is when we adopt any policies, like I would, you know, we should be adopting town-wide policies rather than specific policies for a certain group. Because the employee that, well, they are town employees that are at the pool, right? So if we're going to adopt a policy, it probably should be a town townwide policy that would encompass the uh, fire department and the highway department. And yes, because honestly, in my opinion, it's coming. I mean, if they if they singled out the rec department last summer, th that's why I went to Dave and said, well, do you have one? And he said, no, but I probably should get one because it'll, it'll be I coming. I wonder if Dave might also get some pressure from the National Fire Association or whatever that, that they have a different type of policy that they want to the fire department to have. Could be. I mean, this is specific. You didn't, you didn't change this around and make it specific to a pool environment, if yes. you will, and not yes. firemen or, or police officers are different. Um, I think that's what our initial thought was, was not to make it one size at all, but because we wanted to cater it for each department. Like you said, we would follow it up by possibly the fire department and maybe the police if possible. But, you know, I, I think it's, would it be, it'd be possible to make it a, a town policy. Absolutely, because there's only a few places in there where I specifically mention right. Bethel Recreation Facility. <laughs> we just have to see what, how that, what that does to these other entities what it does to their, how they're, like you said, how they're governed or whatever, whatever jurisdictional entity or whatever has, wants the policy, what kind of policy they want. Fire department, kind of, they play under a whole different set of rules. You know, there are national rules that they have to abide by that, uh, that may not like this policy, I don't know. It's just something that we have to, I guess, discover if you want to go with a, a overall policy for the entire town as opposed to just a, a facility well, specific. Always, uh, <coughs> and then amend it for uh, another one, right? I mean, you could. If, yeah. if it all works together. I'm sure Mark must have some kind of policy. That, and that's just it. We don't know. And we have to find out. If, if he does, then this is probably not going to supersede that one. Right. And so we don't know if it's really worth doing this exercise and doing it for everybody if they're all required federally or whatever to have their own particular type. I, I think Dave said, don't quote me, but I think when I asked him, he said that they didn't have any <coughs> for the fire department. I'm not sure Mark does. Oh, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. I'm surprised that David might have something he's just not aware of. Because, uh, you know, as regulated as his first responders are. Right. <coughs> instead of having the hepatitis B vaccination waiver form, <coughs> could we just. Uh, Adopt the policy. Could we just add something in the policy saying, you know, that it's highly recommended that, you know, the employees to have hepatitis B vaccination when, when dealing with uh, potential bloodborne pathogen, you know, uh, and we'll, you know, hold the town, the Bethel, harmless for, you know, because, I mean, most, I mean, I just kind of look at this as the same as, I don't know, if I'm going to go work in, a restaurant, right? Where again, you have the whole hepatitis that comes into things, and you know, usually, you know, you kind of know that you probably ought to have the hepatitis shot if you're going to go work in the food business. But usually, the employer is not going to say, you know, <coughs> you need to have this or you need to sign this form, or that they're going to pay for the vaccinations themselves. Now, if you work in a hospital setting, most of the time they'll do the vaccinations while well, they have them, anyways. Um, so, I just wonder if. Should we be, you know, do we even need this form? Well, I think part of the, yeah, the, the waiver form is that it's supposed to be visited every year. So you're supposed to go back to your, your employees, whether they're different or new or whatever, and it says it in the body of this document and, and review whether or not they have up-to-date vaccinations. And so if, if they're taking the policy, so the way we typically do policies for our employees is they look at them really one time, I hate to say it, but 
they look at them when they're first adopted and they sign off saying, I, I agree with what's in there. It's supposed to sign it yearly. Well, so it's, in the real world, and these forms allow us to kind of revisit that and, and you know, do it. Uh, and typically they're signed yearly, but that's usually because the board is reviewing them also. And we're looking at them, making these small changes to them, and then, you know, we're giving them back to the employees, and I don't know if that's always happening. So, uh, I think the form was a recommendation from OSHA, and I think it was, I would say for us, it's just a way for us to, to have them on file and be able to go back every year and make sure that we've got updated signature from everybody. And for the pool, or that's the not a problem that because every year I have a change in staff and right. every year I retrain. So every year I will, we will do this training. Every year I will collect their immunization records. So for the pool, it makes sense. I think it would be really easy to make it so that it would make sense for everybody. Yeah, but do we need to pay for somebody to have this? I guess that's my question. Like, there's a difference between being required and, you know, it's recommended. You know, is, is, the, is the hepatitis B vaccination a requirement? I have to, I think this actually, the, the, you know, the, the, it is not a requirement for, this came from the BLCT. Yeah. This, the, the decline was right. from the BLCT. But it's not, the American Red Cross does not require hepatitis B to be employed at one of their... At no, American Red Cross doesn't, I mean, the, the lifeguards, and the as town, per the American Red Cross, does not have to say that you, in order to be a lifeguard, you have to have epi right. hepatitis B. Right. So, no. So in Chris's point, we really don't need to have it, that we will pay for it if they want it. Well, I mean, that's something we can change for sure. Well, I was just thinking more along the policy lines that there should be something in the policy that says, being that you, you know, have the potential of being exposed to this. Here, here are recommendations. Yeah. But I don't know if we need to go as far as to say that we are going to vaccinate everybody at the pool unless you sign a waiver. Because one, you know, I don't know if you really can do that. And two, you know, there's a substantial cost to, I don't know, I mean, say lifeguard turnover is six people a year. You know, you got six new people a year at whatever, $50 a piece. You know, there's $300 a year vaccination kind of story out there, but you know, there's a cost there too. Uh, I would have to, I mean, I would have to ask Wade, yeah. because that, that Some of the costs we're, we're eating because they're minimum wage kids that are not, you know, they're not rolling the money. Well, I, I'm just looking back, like, for instance, when I, I went in the health profession when I went to college, and when I went to college, there were certain um, vaccinations that you needed to get into college, right? But then there were certain vaccinations that I had to go get on my own just because I was in the health field. And hepatitis is sure. sure. And I had to pay for that myself. So I, I just, you know, I understand with their kids and, you know, but most of those kids are probably on their parents' insurance still. I just, I don't know if that needs to be a requirement of. of right. I don't know either. I mean, I just, this is language that I took right from. And I'm just thinking of this like if we end up adopting this policy to move forward and say include the highway department and the administrators and. The the fire department now all of a sudden that group of six or eight people has now turned into you know 30 people that now the town could pay for to have vaccinated or up you know so that you know it could turn into more just kind of honestly i don't know i mean once you're vaccinated for hep b do you have to i mean it's not something that you get a booster for i think we need to you and i need to sit down and we'll do a little work to this um Let's, let's, I think we maybe look at it towards more of a town policy um, and then uh, address some of the other concerns. And when you're looking, you know, look at the cost factor, number one, or one of the things to look at. Um, the <coughs> possible um, the, the, uh, boosters, yes or no? And once you get this in vaccination, are you good for 10 years, five years? I thought, I thought the hepatitis would do with a booster on it. Or you have to get two within a certain amount of time or something. And then... Yeah, I mean, I know my kids got them, but yeah. I don't know that they Because when my kids did it, they had one, and then, like, within three months, they had to have the yeah, second one. Yeah, but there's yeah. no boosters. Yeah, no, but no. There's a series of... You don't of get them as an adult. Yeah. You're done. Yeah, no. But, but then also, once you get past the, your part-time employees, your full-time employees, what does our insurance cover? Well, I think it, the discussion then will take out the... Well, first thing we need to check is the requirement. 
Right. Is it required? It's not required. I, I know the answer to that. So maybe we There's should. There's no position in town other than possibly the cost of it, and probably not even that, uh, where you are required to have this this shop. There isn't. I, I, the only one I can think of actually is actually mentioned Tim, actually, out there at the sewer plant. But I don't even think that he's required. So we'll look into that, and if it's not a requirement, then we'll change this language. Uh, I think what I'm hearing from the board is that if it's not a requirement, then there's no reason that the town will pay for it. If right. you choose to get it because we recommend that you get it, because you know we recommend you do it, great. Uh, we provide you insurance and all that, so you can do it, but we're not going to. And then you wouldn't it. have to worry about a waiver form. Sure. It, um, yeah, sure. Right. Um, so I think we can make the, those changes to that language. We also need to research and find out the requirements. Right. If, if there's any departments within the city, you know, the city, the town, that require this shot. And I know the answer is no. Right. American Red Cross is the only one I could think of, maybe. But and they don't. And they don't. Okay. So we can, we'll make some changes and we'll bring it back. How about that? No, I think that'd be good. And, and I, again, I think just when we're doing policies, we should be looking, um, you know, town-wide, covering the, the entire umbrella. Um, which, is, it's good. If we didn't have one, I think this is great. We should, mm -hmm. you know, definitely adopt one, especially nowadays. Okay, we will we'll bring it back and probably the next meeting. Okay. Other than that, you know, really good job putting this together. Well, yeah, very uh, solid. Thank you. Anything that involves OSHA is a challenge. <laughs> Further discussion? Okay. Does the town, the insurance that we have, the town insurance, do they get involved in any of these? That's what we'll need to check. Yeah, we'll need to check whether or not. You know, most of these, again, this is going to be well for the pool, especially because they're not insured. They're not insured through us. But um, that's something we'll check into. Well, there, but still, there's a liability insurance of some kind at the pool. Yeah, but that wouldn't out. cover this have to be because it's not a required shot. It's not something you're required right. to have for your position. Right. Okay. And that'll be part of what you check. We'll also check and see if our insurance, what sort of copay that looks like or, or whatever that looks like for our employees. If they and, to. and really, we have, I mean, again, to preface, you know, I, these guards are well trained. They're, they're well trained to respond quickly with all the gear that you know they have in their own personal packs which i just learned yesterday because we've got a bunch of kids that are getting certified actually right now as we speak um the american red cross is now requiring that every lifeguard as they are out at the pool have a pack already on their person with all the supplies that they need right there so that they don't have to run to the office or we don't have to waste time getting um but with that said, we will do everything we can to redu reduce the, the risk of exposure in the first place. And, and I think, and that's, and you know, and part of that is even more training, you know, again, teaching the staff. Before you go and touch that, you need to be fully geared up. You need to take a moment and, and do what you need to do to protect yourself first. And so, you know, we're, we're going to stress that and stress that time and time again so that the risk is going to be minimal. If I might, I might have missed it, but the, um, to get the proper PPE and the you know, disposal you mm -hmm. know, containers and things, we, you were getting some sort of grant for that? or have No, you I just used okay. my supply budget um, to get these. They weren't real expensive. No. Actually. One thing, you, I mean, it may want to... You know, I'm sure if you reached out to Gifford or something, they may, you know, donate, you know, some of that. Well, I already have it now for the pool, but again, yeah. if the fire department needs it or if the town office we needs it. We can get it as part of our passive grant, too, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm just thinking yes. there might be opportunities to get it donated or through grants that we get. I'm sure passive grants will to stop that. Yeah. But, I mean, we should have that at, you know, I mean, at the garage or at the office or, you know, we should have a disposal container and, and gloves and things like that. You know, I'm sure we don't, but we should, you know. You need those kind of gloves just to walk around the town garage. So. What are you talking about? So, I mean, I think you, 
you know, they have goals, they ought to have all that. I know, they do have those goals. So. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and like I said, I think the passive grant would probably be the perfect thing to, to utilize to get that kind of stuff for you. So we'll, we'll do some, make some changes, and we'll bring it back. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. And we had the Lister Education Grant. Yep. Um, I don't think there's actually any word even signed. I just saw this today, but uh, one of our listers is going to some classes and they're getting a grant to pay for it, scholarship type thing to pay yep. for the classes. So uh, I don't know if they're asking for an approval just for the minutes, just so we have it. Because um, I don't see any word that anybody has to sign anything. But. Thanks, Steve. Nice. Well, I know we had, we had mentioned here months ago about being aware of all the grants and you know so sure sure i just didn't know if maybe there was more to this that i, I was missing but uh if i don't mind you know if don't mind i think we have a do a motion just uh just so we have it in the record just to approve the application so i would I make a motion to approve the application for the uh lister training okay all in favor Usually these they call them a grant, but usually these are you give your your cost for uh, for going to the training and you pass it in the state. And you do the yeah, we don't call them. Okay. Yeah, and we talked last time about um, and then again this was just something that have a little more information on. Yep. You know, every year the you know we do a pencil whipping exercise of. Um, all the nominations and um, and then place of business for animals. Um, usually, we just kind of go with the country animal hospital and send it on its way. And um, a couple of us had asked this year if maybe we could just get a little information on regards to the others that are in the community, um, being that we don't have an animal hospital in Bethel. Um, it's going to have to be outsourced anyways. So great. Just a real quick, I just put it together real quickly here. Um, you know, I didn't give you the cost for the emergency services because they all are, they vary all over the place depending on what services they need. They all, both of the country and a hospital and Randolph and the hospital provide the same services at a comparable rate. The only thing that's different is their nightly boarding rate. Uh, so the, the Randolph hospital is a little bit cheaper per night than the country animal hospital. Uh, the big one here for when I was talking to Mark is the 24 hour availability. He actually has a key to this <laughs> so he can get in and take the animals at 24 seven. Um, Randolph, I, they don't offer that, and they might if they were to negotiate with them and, and ask them, but um, as of right now, they do not. So um, that, and then Randolph Regional Vet, they're more of a, just a, a vet clinic kind of thing, so they don't have any of these, these things. Um, so I just took a couple that were fairly close to us. I didn't want to go too broad on this because it kind of defeats the purpose of driving a whole long way for yeah. a couple of hours. But the uh, one in Royalton is a lot closer for Mark and most mm -hmm. towns in the yeah. 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 And we've got, you know, we've been with them for a while, so there's a, there's a little bit of a comfort there. Um, they are pretty good about calling us whenever they're proposing to do something to an animal, you know, that's more of that's outside of the, the emergency and, and find out if it's something that we'd be willing to, to pay for or if it's something that we want to do. So. Do we have any way of recouping any of these costs? The only time we recoup costs is if somebody, uh, and so adopts the animal, they'll pay for part of it. Um, or if well, the owner themselves goes and gets the Yes, if they get taken in by by Mark for a, you know an issue with the owner from the owner or something, then the owner has to pay all the fees to get it back down. Yeah. yeah. Most of them. There's just a couple of well, things that don't Yeah, but, but the majority of the fees there. Yeah. But for the most part. So if you bring a straight cat in, well not now. A dog. And by the way, I got a call from the lady who's mad because we don't take cats anymore. But you know, what it is. So, um, if you take a dog in now but, and it doesn't get adopted, the town comes up for the whole thing. And it stays there for 10 days. So, whatever the emergency fees are, plus the 10 days of food, until it goes to the, uh, where to go? It goes to um, Woodstock, I believe. That's where the actual, the actual um, kennel is, or where they adopt them out. So, uh, but they do a pretty good job here of trying to adopt them out from that facility, too. They know they're strays and they'll belong anyway. So, so anyway, that's that's just kind of a really quick, very little synopsis. Um, 
If you're comfortable with, with one of these three, I would entertain a motion to designate him as our, our child. So it's not an initial from the board was to stick with animal. Yeah, the country animal hospital. Yeah, it's not a motion that we stay with country animal hospital. Second. Okay, all in favor? Thank you. So I would assume at the next meeting, Greg will finish up with the rest of the appointments. We still have, if I remember right, we still have a few appointments that we haven't finished yet. So we'll yeah, there's that on the next one. We'll have that the next. Yeah, there's a couple, but there's, okay. yeah, we'll get it. All right, constable report. Didn't look like there was too much activity. Looking through there, only two shifts. Is that right? Yeah, he's been working some long shifts. I believe he's working some long days. Yeah, one was 11, one was 9. Yeah. I saw. Oh, one well, was a trip to uh, Arlington. That was a trip to Arlington for training. Well, the 8 to 19 was town. Yeah, it was the. Um, 20th. The opiate training? Yeah. Yeah. So is that something that's shared by the towns? I think he, he was talking about that, that um, the other town was paying for the training. Right. I guess the only thing that I'll ask him because uh, yeah, the other town I think pays for the training and he might have taken one of the car and he pays for the hours. That's something we're still working on how to balance that out. Remember? Yeah. Because honestly, it's it's there's issues with it all the way around how we balance things out because it's not a, it's not a, a one third split anyway. It's time is not split a third anyway. Yeah. So that's something we need to really work on as he does more training as he really gets into this. And, and maybe it's just a time of year, but this seems my observations of late and looking at his logs that he's not doing as much. I mean, I still see him around the community, but he's not patrolling as many hours, but what I'm going to say, you know, in the community as normal. It seems like more of his, half of his hours are spent on training or others. Here in the last month or so, maybe maybe it's just this time of year. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, training time and the rest of the year is not. But yeah, it just like you know, in the summer and fall, you know, we were getting like like four four shifts with the work, and you know, there was a lot of activity going on. And it was all like in the community, and now it seems like we're getting like two or three shifts and. One or two of those shifts is spent doing training or something else. It's not really. Good. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could ask him that. Maybe just a time of year. And training just, happen. You know, he has tried to expand where he's policing. He's got a camp road. Yeah, and I see him out in Bell. You know, I, I don't know. I'll ask him why. There's a, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the trainings all happen during the off season because it's that time. And it could be. I, but I had seen lately that the state troopers have been doing more patrolling. In our community, then no. yeah, maybe, maybe maybe he talks to them. Uh, yeah, I, I saw him stop somebody the other day. I but I've seen them out and about. They've been hanging out at the fire station and other places quite a bit lately. So, so. at least one or the other is in the community. It's good. So, uh, but I'm sure as spring comes and summer, the speed will go up. And well, right now, I mean, kind of busy. I mean, yeah. stay vehicle around now. Scooters up to open and whatnot. This past weekend, it seemed in the community here that there was a lot of um, out of state yeah. vehicles. I, I noticed that stop eating, at the, you know, getting gas, and was a big influx on this weekend. Mm -hmm. So, it's good all roads and sidewalk are kind of beautiful. Okay. Well, most of the roads you can't even do the speed limit on right now, so. <laughs> well, <you're not> <laughs> I guess you won't get any tickets. Yeah. <laughs> And we had uh, planning commission. Yes, we finally got some planning commission back then. And it looks like they are in desperate need of help. We've so advertised. They're averaging three people a meeting. We've advertised for that multiple times. And it looks like right now we're, we're struggling for help in a lot of committees. 
You know what's funny about that? Planning is, Commission, rec, rec Committee. You remember that flyer you put together at town meeting? We called everybody and said, hey, do you need people? And the ones that responded were the only ones that responded. Nobody else seemed to have any issues. So I don't know if there's, here's, I think, the problem. I don't know that we've got a real defined set of what a board, what those, those boards are really supposed to look like. You know, typically you've got, you've got it defined. It says it's made up, it's comprised of five members with a chair, and this is what they do. You know, they, they make their they make recommendations on, on this kind of an area. So it kind of defines really what their what their purpose and what their structure looks like. And I don't know that I've seen anything in my office that really does that for everyone on the boards. Isn't that kind of what the operator's manual that's being currently? It um, could, yeah. It's sort of intended for it. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't read it. I haven't gone through it very far. Yeah. But it would be worth, if it's not in there currently, making sure that it's yeah. in there. But I, I think that's exactly what their intent is, to give people that informational aspect of you know how things function, not just from the town, but from more than just that. But it's a perfect venue for that. Right. It just seems like, I mean, all committees are important, but, you know, like, when you get into, like, the planning, planning um, commission, conservation committee, those are, you know, two of your larger, right. more important, you know, mm -hmm. and it seems like they're very down on well, and uh, membership funny. right now, and, you know, actually, probably, I think the energy committee has the most yeah. attendees right now. Uh, which is great to see, uh, but we need to fill these other And you ask some of them, are you okay? Do you have enough? Do you need people? And they say, oh, we're great, and maybe two or three. And then others say, we need people, and then maybe two or three. But looking at the planning commission, it's, it's that, you know, with only three people coming, you'll see, you know, uh, this meeting got postponed to this date because, you know, because we have three people, all yeah. it takes is one person that doesn't come, and then the right. meeting is. So in the rec, in the rec is the same way. Absolutely. They have yeah. three people. That and rec struggling too, so. Yeah. I, I mean, not that we want to spend any money, but somehow we just, you know, I don't know if we can maybe do something with the Facebook page or, or something that doesn't cost anything that... We try again. We had a town know, meeting. We had that flyer out there like, that you know, said, you know, we need us. you or something. Yeah. Um, we can repost that flyer. A nice little blurb in the paper would be really nice. <laughs> a nice free blurb in the paper. Maybe like in bold letters. <laughs> <laughs> That all the select board talked about was, was <laughs> we need we need committee members. Yeah, feel free to call here. Yeah, yeah. Picture of Greg. Yeah. We need you. I had that. Did you see our flyer? It said that on top. We need you. But we on our flyer at town meeting. We didn't have yeah, all the same. Picture of you. Yeah, I know. Picture of you. Want to the planning yeah. commission right now? We just got a lot of work ahead of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, no. uh, the town meeting. We have like that's a yeah. They're working on the planning committee. Yeah. I mean that's why they need more members. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they need probably at least two more committee we members. Have we have probably two to three. Advertised since I started here yeah. for everything. Yeah. Just nobody, you know, the, we had, I don't know, we put up 150 flyers for town meeting. And yeah. nobody. Nobody. Not a ticket. Not a ticket. But well, we got somebody that, uh, on the sewer board. Well, there was another person for energy. Sewer. Yeah. Have in? <laughs> but yeah, so it's 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 a tough it's a tough deal. It really is. You know, the pay's not real good. And <laughs> <laughs> it pays. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all the comp time. Really. So, Greg, this this one for the meeting of two twenty nineteen for the planning commission it says the next meeting is going to be in September. Okay, that must be a misprint. That's that's the one with the two rivers. Next meeting, Next meeting will be September 20th, 7 p.m. at the Bethel Town Office. Yeah, I mean, they were meeting monthly. Well, enrollment's down, so now. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're. Well, it's going to be a mess for them. Well, what's the. Because the new plan is going to be in four. In they usually meet, they usually meet uh, monthly. Once. Yeah, <laughs> my guess is that's a mess for them. Once. And month. it's only draft, so hopefully we'll pick it up. This is a draft. Yeah. Hopefully we'll pick that up in the final. Yeah, they could have, they could have printed that a little bigger. Well, they're they did a pretty good right up. It takes a lot of electricity to print that size. It costs more than classes. Yeah. Oh, 
we don't have it on the agenda, I guess we can't approve the meeting minutes. You know what? I got the minutes into the town office late because we had a challenging week at our house. So it, they, they were there Friday morning, but I, I needed some clarification on a couple of things, and I think it just was a yeah. little bit much to get in the past. Yeah. We'll just bring it back. Yeah. 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 My apologies for that. It, uh, while we have it, does anybody have any questions in regards to the meeting minutes so that they could be amended prior you know, to the next meeting? Or, or are we good with them? No, since I haven't seen them. Oh, did you not get in your packet? They were in the packet. Did you not get in your packet? They are in the packet. Teresa no. told me they were not in the packet. I have. Them. You I have the minutes from last week? I have. No, this no, is. No, these are the amended ones for the 25th. Yeah, yeah the we don't have the. Yeah, we don't have You them. don't have last week's. No, the last no, no, last no. Week's. Okay. I haven't even reviewed those anyway. No. Oh, okay. All right. They're still on my computer. Yeah, these are the amended ones. Yeah, I think it was Yeah. And now this is the one with the edits that we had. Right, and we did the edits. Yeah. I'll make a motion to be accepted. Okay, all right. The uh, 225? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I second that. Yeah. Well, they should be accepted, all right? We already make an amendment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just got to sign them. I think they were accepted pending the. They were. Yeah. Yeah. Pending yeah. for the. Uh, yeah. just got to sign But we didn't get the other one because, real honestly, the other ones didn't get the areas because I, I knew we had a thousand one and I hadn't had enough to it. Okay. All right. And you saw the conservation commission house as well? Yep. They're in there. Okay. And anybody else have anything else they want to read? Okay. And I'll entertain a motion to enter the executive session to discuss personnel matters.